This is my ranking of every Mario Party 10 minigame. The rules remain the same. It's only my opinion and no one else's. And long live concept. And difficulty and replayability. Also, I'll be judging the Bowser minigames based on how fun they are to play as Bowser and not as a team player. Alright, intro's over. So, show time. 75. Balloon Blast Bash. Each player has their own balloon, and must inflate it as much as they can without popping it. If it does pop, they're eliminated, and the player with the biggest balloon when time expires is the winner. But the thing is, there's no way of knowing when the balloon will pop. So... <gasps> this mini game is 100% luck-based! And on top of that, it's boring, and its concept is lackluster. Like most other luck-based minigames, it fills every fiber of my being with rage. 74. Fruit Cahoots. There's a conveyor belt full of apples and bob -omms. and each round, the players can either press a button to make the belt move one space, or do nothing to keep it as is. After the players make their choices, the belt will move the amount of spaces determined by said choices, thus granting each player whatever item ends up in front of them. Apples give one point each, while bob -omms take one point each, and the player with the most points after seven rounds is the winner. Luck sucks. It can go f*** a duck in a hockey puck truck. Yuck. 73. bob -omb Combo. The players are in a room with a crowd of moving bob -omb and they take turns throwing a lit bob -omb into the crowd to start a chain reaction of explosions. When a bob -omb blows up, it'll light any other bob -omb that were standing in its blast radius, but if no bob -omb were nearby, the combo will end. The player to blow up the most bob -omb is the winner. This minigame is luck-based! Completely so, since the bob -omb can move anywhere at any time, which means you have virtually no control over your combo. Although, the concept is actually really clever, unique, and original. 72. Goomba Gallop. Several Goombas, Galoombas, and Scoombrats will walk across a field, and the players must watch them carefully, then guess which species appeared the most. If they guess wrong, they'll score nothing, but if they guess right, they'll score points. The first to guess right gets five, second gets three, third gets two, and last gets one, and the player with the most points after two rounds is the winner. In this one, it's borderline impossible to keep close, let alone exact count of all three species, so again, it's pretty much all about luck. You know, my all-time favorite thing. 71. Bowser's Bogus Bingo. Each team player must pick a bingo card with several different Mario series enemies, and once they do, Bowser will get to roll a dice block, each face featuring one of said enemies. The enemy that appears on the upward face will be marked off every team player's bingo card, and for each bingo they get, Bowser will get to take one heart each from them. It's bingo, so... It's completely up to chance! I will say, its concept is really cool, but the fact that it's luck-based means I can't put it any higher. 70. Meanie Match. There are 12 colored circles, each with a different Mario series enemy standing atop it. The players are given 15 seconds to memorize as many of them as they can, before the little pizza slices are placed in the middle, and the players take turns putting them back in their correct spots one by one. But if they put an enemy in the wrong spot, they're out, and the last player standing, or anyone still standing once all the enemies are back in their spots, wins. I thought you liked memory testing games. I do, but the thing with this one is, there's just way too much to memorize all at once. 69. So what's a score? You're hanging onto a rope getting spun around fast, and with good timing, must let go to land on a platform and get as many points as possible. The one with the most points after two rounds wins. I know, you thought I liked games that require good timing, but I just find this one's timing too hard to pin down. So, to be honest, it feels kind of luck-based, in a dart attack sort of way. Sorry to sound like a sore loser. You suck! 68. Soccer Brawl, or more simply, playing bumper balls and soccer at the same time, each player's rolling on their own ball, and, you guessed it, must score points by getting the soccer ball into the other team's goal. The team with the most points when time is up wins. You know how some people say just because two things are good on their own doesn't necessarily mean they'll go well together? This minigame is the epitome of that. In my opinion, at least, bumper balls and soccer don't really mix. Although I do like how Nintendo took a risk and tried something new, they just couldn't make this concept work. 67. Shape Up. Each team has a bunch of shapes, which they must stack atop one another to make a stable tower. The first team who does so wins. And that be it. This one is a kind of good challenge, but I just find it a little boring. And on top of that, no special concept either. And side note, it's pretty short. A part of me does sort of like it a little, but at the end of the day, I don't really care for it. 66. Revolving Relay. Just think pedal to the paddle for Mario Party 9 for four players. Each team has their own wheel platform, and they must keep jumping on it to progress toward the finish line. The first one to reach said finish line wins it for their team. I like how this one has more players, but for one, the track is non-linear, which makes it less fun, and two, players go one at a time instead of both at once, which means it doesn't require any teamwork or synchronization, so it might as well be a free-for-all. In short, this one's pedal to the paddle done wrong. 65. Ba bomb Bogey. You just play golf. Well, the driving part at least. Each time you hit a golf ball, you'll get points. The sooner you hit it, the more points you'll score. But if a bomb pops up, don't hit it unless you want to lose points. If you have the most points at the end, you win. This one's kind of like a simplified version of Sunday Drivers from 6, but a bit more difficult. You might think that'd make me like it more, but I feel like the penalty for making a mistake is too harsh, enough to outweigh how much good focus and reaction time it takes.
64. Blooper Blastoff. Each player's in their own blooper submarine thing, which they must race, yes, race, to the surface. Also, watch out for wind-blowing pipes and torpedo teds. First one to reach the surface wins. So why did I rank this race so low? Because relatively speaking, it's kind of slow-paced. It's also pretty cramped. And both those flaws are enough to make this minigame just meh for me. But I will say, I love the original concept. 63. Ice slide, you slide. Here you race again, this time on a long icy track. Along the way, you have to jump over snowballs and slide under flippers. Or is it flipperses? Cross the finish line first and you win. If not for one big flaw, I could all but guarantee this would be one of my favorites. What is that flaw, you may ask? It's the motion controls. They pretty much never seem to want to cooperate with me here. It's a real shame, because this minigame is a really fun race. Ah, uh, gotta love it when a minigame would be much better if not for one simple flaw. 62. Rapid River Race. Oh, race is right in the title, so that means I must love this one, huh? To be honest, a part of me does. Your speedboat racing and dodging urchins, you want to cross the finish line first. If you do so, you win. You can adjust your speed as you please, but the faster you go, the harder it'll be to avoid urchins. So you have to find a happy medium that works for you. For some reason, I've always found that kind of hard to define, and therefore, I don't like this one quite as much as a lot of other people seem to. But again, a part of me does love it. 61. Mega Cheap Chomp Shell Shock. This one's a lot like Womp Stomp from 9. Each player's got their own shell cannon, which they must shoot at Cheap Chomp both to get points and drain his health. But it's not that simple. Each time he gets hit, he'll turn and face the next player, and if he's facing you when the timer hits zero, he'll attack you and cause you to lose points. The one with the most points once he goes belly up wins. So yeah, there is a little bit of luck involved, but not as much as Womp Stomp, hence why I find it better. But if any boss battle takes even a small amount of luck, that's gonna hold it back quite a bit. But even so, I definitely don't hate this one. 60. Bowser's Clawful Climb. The team players and Bowser are climbing up a huge tower, the latter in hot pursuit of the former. They must button mash as fast as they can, and each time Bowser catches up to a team player, he or she will lose three hearts. This minigame is really short and quite simple, but note that I said simple and not simplistic. In other words, it's nice and simple. It's also quite fun, and you should know how much I like button mashing games. Its concept isn't that special, but the main reason it's not the worst Bowser minigame is because it's just plain fun. Sorry, that's all I can say for Clawful Climb. 59. Bound it, pound it. You're standing atop several panels, each with a different sequence of Mario items on them. The screen will show one of said sequences, at which point you must find the panels with that sequence and ground pound them. The faster you do so, the more points you'll score, and if you have the most after three rounds, you win. This one does take good focus, but I just find it a bit too hard. And though it is immersive, it's also a little boring, but it's really not bad. 58. Murky Maze, or more simply, a 2v2 version of Light Up My Night from 6. You're in a dark maze in which you must run around trying to meet up with your partner. The first team to reunite wins. Even though you do have a light block to see where you are, the maze is so big that it feels mostly up to luck. I mean, there is technically a moving spotlight that'll show you what the entire maze looks like at the beginning, but it moves so fast that it feels more up to chance than to memory. 57. Move in mushrooms. A bunch of mushrooms will keep falling down, and the players using girders must try to make them fall into one of their side's goals. Except the poison ones, which make you lose points, so try to drop those into the other side's goals. The side with the most points when time is up wins. This one does, to an extent, feel kind of up to luck, but even so, I think its concept is really clever, innovative, and unique. I know there are some other minigames like this, but this one being a 1v3 gives it a whole different dynamic that makes me like it more than I would otherwise. 56. Badminton Bash. You just play badminton. You know, using a racket to hit a shuttlecock back and forth with the other team, and if they miss, you get a point, and the first team to a certain point goal wins? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Just plain old badminton, so obviously, no special concept. I do think it's kind of fun, but most times, I feel like the controls are a little off. It could just be that I'm bad at it. I really put the bad in badminton. But even if that's the case, a part of me does like it a lot. 55. Dyson Dash. Just think Toad in the Box from 2, but much better. Each player has their own spinning block, which they must hit at the right time to get all three items and not Bowser. The first player who does so wins. The block speeds up with each hit, but nowhere near as much as in Toad in the Box, so it doesn't feel luck-based. But in general, it's nice and simple, and takes good timing, but it's still a bit short and dull. 54. Bowser Jr.'s Bonk Battle. BJ's standing atop a bunch of blocks, and you're standing under them. You have to run around, jump, and hit them, trying to hit BJ. If you can do so three times in the time limit, you win. I guess this might have been Nintendo's way of reviving the feel of the Bowser Jr. minigames from 9. That's neat, I guess, but this one, though fun, is a bit short and simplistic, and not to mention only one player. But without the juxtaposition, it's, again, fun as well as immersive, so I do like it. 53. Bowser's Roulette Rage. The team is in a roulette with six slots, and Bowser must deploy three bombs, spin the wheel, then stop it. If he can manage to trap any of the team players at a slot with a bomb, they'll lose three hearts per bomb. There are three rounds, and if he so chooses, Bowser can put multiple bombs in the same slot, which will take even more hearts from team players if he likes taking risks. This one can feel a bit luck-based at times. Well, it's roulette, what do you expect? But it has a clever concept, I'll give it that. 
52. Bullet Bill Bullies. Is it just me, or does this one kind of bring to mind Balloonatic from 7? The lone player on a switchboard must avoid Bullet Bills being shot at them by the team. If they get hit three times before time expires, the team wins, but if not, they win. It's an attack-themed 1v3, so you can likely guess what I think about this one. Fun for the team, on toe-keeping for the lone player, and thrilling for everyone. And there are bonuses. The concept is cool, because shooting game, and original, because Bullet Bills, and I don't care what side I'm on. 51. Ground Pound Pals, or Sands Trap from 9 with a fresh coat of paint. The players must ground pound two glowing squares at the same time in good coordination with their teammate to get coins. The team to get the most coins in the time limit wins. Since this one has more emphasis on speed than accuracy, it's not quite as good as Sands Trap, but I still like it a lot. It requires teamwork and perfect sync, and good timing, obviously, and I kind of like its theme and concept. 50. Jewel Drop. Well, Castle Clear Out from 9 wearing a different outfit. Tons of jewels will keep falling, which you have to get rid of by lining them up with at least three of the same color. Each time you do so, you'll score points, and you want to go for a new record. But if the pile of jewels gets too big, you lose. I think I like this one and Castle Clear Out the same amount. It's just a nice, fun, simple puzzle game. The basket shaking and giant jewels were nice touches, but I feel it's too similar to Castle Clear Out. I think I might like it more if it had more new features, but even so, it's still really good. 49. Fruit Scoot Scurry. You're standing atop a lot of stone eyes, atop which fruits will keep appearing. Jumping across the stone eyes, you want to collect as many fruits as you can. The one to have gotten the most before time expires wins. That's all she wrote. Yeah, not a whole lot to this one. It's just fun, and I guess with a kind of original concept, because, you know, the stone eyes? Sorry, that's it. Just really fun. Some mini games just don't have a lot to them. 48. Bowser's Wicked Wheel. In this one, the team players are basically Bowser's pet hamsters. They're running in a huge wheel, and Bowser, using the gamepad's touchscreen, must repeatedly spin and stop the wheel to make them get zapped by amps. They'll lose one heart each time this happens. This one's kinda similar to Clawful Climb, in that it's quite short. However, what makes it better is the more clever concept, along with the fact that it's a bit more fun. I do tend to prefer button mashing games over touch control ones, but despite that fact, the fun of it is what puts Wicked Wheel this high. 47. Balance Ball Brawl, or better yet, Soccer Brawl done right. Each player's rolling on their own ball and must roll over seven checkpoints. First one to do so wins. This one's fun and kind of a good challenge, but more importantly, it makes excellent use of the motion controls. In fact, I also see this one as a spiritual successor to Bumper Ball Maze from one. Emphasis on success. It's not too big of a challenge, has more players, and again, has great new motion controls. 46. Bump, Set, Spike. I don't really think I have to say a whole lot here. Just use your eyes. What's going on? Looks to me like volleyball. Unknown entity bumps, one teammate sets, the other teammate spikes. Each time you pull off that trifecta, you'll score a point, and the team with the most points when time expires wins. Duh. No noteworthy concept here, but it does take good timing and put the motion controls to good use. Works for me. 45. Platform Push. I'll start with this. This one's a fighting minigame. Now you already know why I like it. No thanks necessary. You're on a platform over a poison swamp, and fighting game equals punch and kick, and that plus this setting equals fall off you lose, and outlast foes or timer you win. But here's the catch. The platform keeps getting smaller and smaller, which of course means it gets harder and harder. I do like this twist, but unfortunately, it puts more emphasis on the survival part than the fighting part, so that's gonna hold it back a little, but even so, I still love it. 44. Steal the Beat. This one's kind of like a more intense version of Move to the Music from 2, with the hint of the beat goes on from 3. The lone player must start a drum riff, and the team players must perform it themselves. If they can get through 3 rounds with no more than 9 mistakes, they win, but if they make 10 mistakes, the lone player wins. This one takes close focus for the team, and is really fun no matter what side you're on, so I'm always happy to play it. 43. Goomba Gotcha. Several Goombas, Skullumbas, and Goombrats will walk across a park, and the players must click on as many of a specific one as they can, scoring one point for each. The player with the most points when time expires wins. This one requires close attention and also has a pretty clever concept, and I guess original too. It's also a fairly decent challenge. In fact, you could probably call it a harder version of Goomba Spotting from 9. Not quite as fun, mind you, but still really good. 42. Cheap Cheap Check. There's a bunch of Cheap Cheap swimming around, and the team must count them while the lone player must scare them to make things harder for the team. If the team can guess the right amount, they win, but if not, the lone player wins. As far as Mario Party counting minigames go, this one has a really unique concept. As per usual, it takes close focus for the team. Well, in this case, laser focus, and it's really fun for the lone player. I think I slightly prefer to be on the team, but I'm happy being the lone player, too. 41. Magma Meltdown. This one's similar to Lava Tile Isla from 2. <sighs> You're on small platforms over lava, which will keep dis and reappearing in different spots. Of course, you want to get on a new one before the one you're on sinks, because if you fall in the lava, you lose. If you can outlast the other players or the timer, you win. This one's fun and very on toe keeping and challenging, especially as it progresses since less and less platforms start appearing. Do I like this one or Lava Tile Alamore? Eh, hard to say. That one's a fighting game, but this one has smoother controls.
40. Spiked Ball Scramble. The players are running through a castle with several spiked balls, and they must run along towards the exit, being careful to avoid not only said spiked balls, but also falling in the lava, since touching either of them results in elimination. Any player to reach the exit wins. This one is really fun and nerve-wracking, with a quite epic concept. Also, kind of like sick and twisted from eight. <sighs> I'm glad it's not a race, because if it were, that would make it harder for you to watch your steps. 39. Bowser's Bad Breath. The team players are running around in an arena, and Bowser, by blowing into the gamepad's microphone, must breathe fire towards them. Any player the fire hits will lose one heart. I'm gonna be honest with you, the main reason this minigame is this high is because it's just plain fun with an original concept. It's also unique, since no other minigames utilize the microphone. Don't quote me on that. It also makes good use of the gyroscope. Well, for Bowser... 38. Mega Mega Koopa Swing and Stomp. Players must swing from chains to stomp on Mega Mega Koopa's head, say that five times fast, and drain its health, scoring one point each time they do so. The player with the most points when all of said health is gone wins. And of course, they must also not get hit by it or its fire, unless of course they want to lose points. This one's just a fun, nice and simple boss battle, and I have to say, a Mega Koopa for a boss is kind of unexpected, and I like that. 37. Cheap Cheap Leap. Each player's powered up with a superstar, with which they must hit approaching Cheap Cheeps. They'll score points each time they do so, and the one who has the most when time is up wins. Really? This one's just very fun. I wish there were more to it than that, but in the end, it's just the fun of it. Well, actually, there is more. Its concept is clever, innovative, and very original, but like I always say, good concepts are just gravy. The most important thing about a minigame is how fun it is, and this one's insanely fun. 36. Keep Away Mayhem. The team players stand in a triangle and must keep kicking a soccer ball back and forth to one another. Meanwhile, the lone player must try to steal the ball from them. If they can do so in the time limit, they win, but if not, the team wins. No significant concept, obviously, but I think it's mad fun. It's really cool how the team can strategize and the lone player has to try to predict said strategy. But even with that, it's also nice and simple. How oxymoronic. 35. Bouncy Bounty. On each team, one player's got a note block from which the other must keep jumping to get coins. The team with the most when time is up wins. And that's all. 2v2, so good teamwork, right? And note blocks and getting coins, so original concept? And I can't think of any other minigames like this, so one of a kind? And those are all telltale signs of me loving a minigame, so good minigame, right? 34. Paintball Battle. I think this one is self-explanatory. Do I even have to say anything? Just a good old-fashioned paintball fight. So, I think anyone with half a brain cell should be able to understand how this minigame works. I wouldn't be surprised if, at one point, this was Mario Party 10's most popular minigame, given it came out around the same time Splatoon did. But not just that. Also, because of how fun it is. Who doesn't love a good paintball gunfight? 33. Peepa Panic. You're running through a mansion full of peepas, which, well, you probably already know. Yep, you, of course, want to let them catch you. I mean, duh, right? Because if you do, you lose a life, which is totally what you want to happen. Because if you lose all three, you lose. And don't be first to get to the end, because if you are, you win. And who wants that? But real talk, though, this one's very on toe keeping with an original concept. It's also a good challenge, because these peepas are all over the place, man. And also, unlike in Spiked Ball Scramble, just getting to the end isn't enough. You have to get there first. 32. Snake Block Party. The players, using snake blocks to run on, must traverse across several mid-air platforms until they reach the finish line. The first player to do so wins. This one is just plain fun, and, again, nice and simple, and it also has quite an original concept, which is always something I respect in Mario Party minigames. But you already knew that. It feels kind of like a vanilla version of Sky Jinx from 9. <laughs> 31. Spring Fling. The lone player must activate springs to send the team players right through the ceiling. If they can do so to all three of them before time expires, they win, but if not, the team wins. It's a 1v3 where one side has to oust the other, in this case, the lone player ousting the team, so what does that mean? What is fun for the lone player on toe-keeping for the team and thrilling for everyone? That is correct. Spring Fling's the thing. 30. Fruit of the Doom. You're at the foot of a waterfall, down which fruits will keep falling. You want to get as many of them as you can, scoring one point for each. But watch out for urchins, because if you touch one, you'll lose points. Whoever has the most points when time expires wins. This one's both really fun and on toe-keeping. And really, that's it. Nothing else to it. No interesting concept, but... If a minigame is fun enough, it does not matter how good or bad its concept is. How many times has this been said? 29. Bowser's Pain Ball. The team players are running around in a pinball machine, and Bowser must launch spiked balls at them. If they get hit by one, they'll lose one heart. This one is really fun, and it also has a very clever concept. Is it just me, or is Nintendo really good with the pinball dynamic? I mean, no one could beat Waluigi, of course, but Bowser comes pretty close here. Pain Ball is... uh... not a pain in my ass? Oh, but my sense of humor sure is... 28. Shy Guy Shuffle. There's five Shy Guys, each with a platter of donuts in differing amounts. After the platters get covered, the Shy Guys will shuffle around, and you want to try to keep track of the one with the most donuts, and when they stop, pick him out. You'll then get one point for each donut your Shy Guy has, and the player with the most points after three rounds wins. Obviously, this one takes really close focus, and also, it's nice and simple. And also, again, the concept is kinda cute, and the fun little after party is too. Just be careful who you invite. 
27, Petey's Bomb Battle. You somehow have an endless supply of bombs, but you have to keep throwing at Petey Piranha. Each hit gets you one point, but be careful. If you throw one when he starts inhaling, he'll spit it back at you, which will make you lose points. Whoever has the most points when Petey runs out of health is the winner. This one's just a simple, really fun boss battle. It also makes great use of the motion controls. I don't think I'd call it a good challenge, nor would I call its concept interesting, but I'm pretty sure you know what I have to say in response to that. If you don't, well, your brain must not fire on all cylinders. 26. Bowser Jr.'s Clobber Cage. You're in a small arena with BJ, who's got a hammer. You have to steal the hammer from him, then hit him with it three times. If you can do so before time expires, you win. This one's honestly just really fun. There's really nothing else to it. Also, it feels really good bringing the hammer down on that little ankle biter. In a way, it's kind of like a combination of coin block bash from one and lights out from two. Oh, cursed recrudescence. 25. Skewer Scurry. The lone player's in control of a ton of skewers, which they must use to hit all three team players, and said team players must avoid them by hiding behind walls. If at least one of them can outlast the timer, they win, but if not, the lone player wins. It's an attack-based 1v3, so what does that mean? It's blank for the lone player, blank for the team, and blank for everyone. Fill in the blanks. If you guessed fun, on toe-keeping, and thrilling in that order, you're correct! But there's no prize. Sorry. 24. Hop, Drop, and Roll. I see this one like a mix of Wheel of Woe from 7 and Spike and Span from 9. Ugh. <sighs> The lone player must keep launching bullet bills and dropping girls trying to hit all three team players. If they can do so in the time limit, they win, but if at least one team player can survive the entire time, the team wins. It's another attacking 1v3, so... If you know, you know... And I find this one a huge improvement over both Wheel of Woe and especially Spike and Span. Hop, Drop, and Rolls on a roll. 23. Mega Monty Mole's Maze Mischief. Loving them alliteration. There's a maze you have to run through to reach cannons, then fire them at Mega Monty Mole. The faster you get through the maze, the stronger the cannon you'll get. Stronger, meaning causing Triple M more damage and giving you more points. And whoever has the most points when Mega Monty Mole's defeated wins. This is a really fun, unique boss battle. It's also a decent challenge, especially since the maze keeps changing. And when Mega Monty Mole gets pissed off and starts throwing bombs into the maze, which of course can take points. The concept is kind of out there, but I ain't nitpicky. This game is Mega Mondo Mui Mucho... Awesome? 22. Cliffside Crisis. The players are standing atop five bombs, with five other bombs directly above. These bombs will continuously retract and eject, and the players must run and jump to avoid falling in the pit below. Any player to outlast the other players or the timer wins. This one is fun on toe-keeping and nerve-wracking, again with an original concept. It can also be a bit challenging at times. Well, to be more specific, it can feel a little up to chance, but really, that's no sweat. 21. Mega Sledge Bros Card Chaos. Each round, there'll be a ton of cards, some with bullet bills and others with hammers. You'll have five seconds before they get turned over, at which point you want to pick a bullet bill card. For each bill you get, you'll score one point and cause Mega Sledge Bro damage. But don't pick a hammer card, or you'll lose one point per hammer Mega Sledge Bro throws at you. If, when he runs out of health, you have the most points, you win. This boss battle takes both close focus and a good reaction time, and maybe a decent memory, since Mega Sledge Bro can knock a few cards away each round. This all makes for a mega awesome minigame. 20. Watermelon Whalen. This one takes place on a beach, and the lone player has a hammer, and each team player has a watermelon. Yeah, I think it's pretty obvious what happens next. If the lone player can bash all three watermelons before time is up, they win, but if not, the team wins. No matter what side you're on, this one's really fun and hectic. Yes, that is to say I'm fine being either on the team or the lone player. And with such a simple concept, I also love how sidelined team players can try to get in the lone player's way. Talk about unique! 19. Fuzzy Flyers. Each player is riding their own cloud, which they must race to the top of a tower. Along the way, you have to pick up more clouds to add to your timer, plus avoid fuzzies, which will make your timer drain faster. If your timer hits zero, you lose, but if you cross the finish line first, you win. This one's both a race and a game of survival, and also, it's a vertical race. A hectic chock-a-block one. Oh, and you want a cherry on top of all this? Its concept is very original. If you're fuzzy about Fuzzy Flyers, I'm fuzzy about you. Your fuzz ain't gonna fly here. 18. Bowser's High Dive. The team players and Bowser start on two platforms. Bowser will then jump high in the air, and the team players must pick one of the platforms to stand on, hoping the one they pick won't be the one Bowser lands on. Any player Bowser lands on will lose two hearts, and there are three rounds. This one is very fun, but its concept is, get ready for a shock. Not clever, but just plain hilarious. Seeing Bowser sit on the players from so high in the air is just hysterical to me. Don't ask why. I won't lie, this minigame can feel a bit luck-based at times, but the pure fun of it and the funny concept are enough for that to not even matter. 17. Goombrat Combat. Say that five times fast. You're in a field full of Goombrats, but you have to keep punching off your team's side onto the other team's side. The team with the least amount of Goombrats on their side when time is up wins. This is another really hectic one, and the pacing is crazy fast, which I love. And you know what else I love, right? Good old fighting games. Well, I guess this one's a quasi-fighting game, but still. And Goombrats, so, you know, concept of originality! 
16 Bowser Sinister Slots. The team players are running around on a train, and Bowser, using the gamepad's touchscreen, must stop slots to launch bullet bills at them, which take one heart from any team player they hit. Side note, the bullet bills home in on the team player who the slot they were launched from stopped on. Just like Painball, this one is really fun with a not only clever, but also original concept. It's also nice and simple, and another side note, I love the Super Mario 3D World reference. I also love how the bullet bills go in frenzy mode when all three slots stop on the same player. Bullet Bill Blitzkrieg. 15. Mega Goomba's Ladder Leap. You have to climb up ladders to get up onto a platform, then jump from it to stomp on Mega Goomba's head. Doing so both gives you points and drains his health, and the one who has the most points once he's down wins. And side note, watch out for Waddle Wings. This one is, yes, very fun, but there's more. With the Waddle Wings and how fast Mega Goomba starts moving after he gets pissed off, it's a pretty good challenge. But most of all, the original concept. The thing Mario's been doing ever since his humble days on the NES made into a boss battle. I know I always say good concepts are, most times, just gravy, but this one's is so amazing that I can't help but love it for that. 14. Bubble Squabble. Remember how, in the new Super Mario Bros. series, when playing multiplayer, you'd start floating around in a bubble after you die, and another player has to pop it to set you free? This minigame is basically just that. So there's one reason why I like it right out of the box. Original concept, you're welcome. The team players jumping on mushroom trampolines must avoid bubbles being sent their way by the lone player. If they get caught in one, and a teammate doesn't save them in time, they're out. If they all float away before time is up, the lone player wins, but if at least one of them can stay in the entire time, they win. For brevity's sake, this one's just insanely fun. I really can't say any more that I haven't already. I love it! 13. Boo Burglars. On each team, one player's got a flashlight and must keep shining it on boos to see if they're carrying gems. If they are, the other player, with a net, has to run over and catch the gem. The team to get the most gems in the time limit wins. Like Bubble Squabble, this one's just, for some reason, insanely fun. I really can't explain why. It's just a nice and simple collecting minigame. The concept, though somewhat original, maybe, isn't really special, but gravy. That's all I'm gonna end this with. Gravy. You should know what it means by now. 12. Bowser's Hammer Slammer. The team players are riding minecarts on a circular track, with Bowser in the middle, who must try to hit them with his hammer, each successful hit taking one heart. Can you guess why I love this one? It's because it's extremely fun, and just nice and simple. What's more fun than whacking people with hammers? At first, I had a hard time choosing between this one, High Dive, and Sinister Slots, and although I think they're all really fun, I had to give the advantage to Hammer Slammer, since unlike in High Dive, there's no luck involved, and I think I just find it a tad more fun. 11. Pipe Sniper. There's a bunch of pipes, out of which piranha plants will keep popping, and with a pop gun you have to... Yeah, I really don't think you need me to tell you. Each successful shot gets you points, and if you have the most when time is up, you win. This is a rapid-fire shooting game. Yeah, I really don't think you need me to remind you how much I love those. And it's also really cool how there are swoops flying around in the background, and you can try to shoot them for even more points. Gotta love moving targets. 10. Beeline Shrine. You're in a forest, and a bunch of bees will keep flying in, and of course you want to avoid them. If one touches you, you'll lose a heart, and if you lose all three, you lose. And whoever has the most hearts remaining when time expires wins. I'll be brutally honest here, I don't care for this minigame's concept in the slightest, because I hate bees. Ugh. But you know how I always say good concepts are just a nice bonus, and it doesn't matter a whole lot how good or bad it is? Beeline Shrine's one of the best examples of that, because it's super fun and on toe-keeping. Would you believe it? See what all my buzz for this one's about? Oh, that just stings, doesn't it? 9. Bobsled Battle, or a faster version of Bobsled Run from 1 and 2. Each team has their own bobsled, which they must race across a long, icy track. Along the way, they have to both get coins and avoid bobombs. Unless, of course, they want to lose coins. The team with the most coins at the end wins. Just like Bobsled Run, this is a really fun, fast-paced race. I'm not totally sure whether I prefer that one or this one, but does it really matter? No, I don't think so. 8. Bowser's Fire Bar Fury. Bowser's holding an arena with all four team players and two fire bars inside, and by using the gamepad's motion controls, he must tilt it around to make the team players get hit by the fire bars. They'll lose one heart each time they get burnt. This one is extremely fun. However, what makes it my favorite Bowser minigame is the concept. It's not only original, but also the most clever and unique of them all. This minigame is also nice and simple. In a nutshell, it has everything a good minigame should. Lots of fun and amazing concept, and nice and simpleness. 7. King Boo's Tricky Tiles. You have to attack King Boo with magic lights. To do so, you have to jump across tiles over a poison swamp to reach the switches. But be careful, because some of the tiles are actually Boo's in disguise. And if you jump on one, you'll fall into the poison below and lose a point. Each time you shine a light on King Boo, you'll both get points and drain his health. The player with the most points once all of said health is gone wins. This one does have a tiny bit of luck involved, but really, it's negligible, because it's so fun and takes good memory. And the concept? Epic. I'll admit, it's not really challenging, but that's negligible too. Overall, awesome boss battle. 6. Bowser's Tank Terror. Each player's got their own tank, as does Bowser, and you have to keep shooting cannonballs at him, both for points and to drain his health. Once he's down to half health, he'll get blown into the lava and turn into Dry Bowser, and grow in size somehow. You still have to keep shooting him, and once he's defeated, the player with the most points wins. How can I put this in a way you'll under- EPIC! Specifically, the concept, the good challenge, because Bowser has a plethora of counterattacks that are hard to avoid and can take a lot of points from you, especially in the Dry Bowser phase, and most of all, the insane fun of it. All around, epic final 
boss battle. Five, fool me once. There are several platforms, which you have to memorize the buttons of before foos cover them with clouds. You must then jump from one to the next, and if you miss any, you lose, but if you can make it to the end, you win. So obviously, this one takes good memory and is just really fun and nice and simple. And that's all I have to say about it. Not all mini games are good for a big number of reasons. How many times have I said that before? Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, still shame on you. 4. Bouncy Brawl. This one's like Bounce and Trounce from 3, but much better. You're high in the sky, bouncing on a trampoline, and with a spin attack, you must try and knock all the other players off. If you're the last one sta- bouncing, you win. Oh, this one's a great time, man. Super duper fun, and a great improvement from Bounce and Trounce. And there's something else. This minigame's caveat is you don't want to spin too fast, or you'll get dizzy and become vulnerable. And normally, I don't like games where you have to restrain yourself, but here, I'm all for it, because it'd be super broken otherwise. 3. Comic's Rocket Rampage. You're flying your own plane, and must get rockets and shoot them at Comic. Each time you do, you'll both get points and cause him damage. But also, watch out for his amps, bullet bills, and bonsai bills. Unless, of course, losing points is desired. Whoever has the most points once Comic is down wins. Needless to say... EPIC CONCEPT! I mean, a freaking fighter plane battle? Saying that's not epic is like saying Comic's not a magic Koopa. And even more needless to say, it's insanely fun. And also, it's a good challenge. Well, that's partially because it's kinda cramped, but all the amazing things about this boss battle more than I outweigh that. 2. Flash forward. The players are in front of a camera and must be standing on the podium when it snaps a picture. However, said podium is too small to fit all four players at once. Therefore, they have the option to attack their opponents to knock them off it. They can stomp, punch, kick, and ground pound, and any player standing on the podium when the camera flashes will get points. If they can manage to strike a pose, they'll score extra points. Otherwise, they'll score nothing. The player with the most points after the picture is taken is the winner. This minigame's concept is extremely clever and epic, and you don't need Mondo Mama Brains to know that I love fighting games, even though it literally only lasts 10 seconds. Flash Forward is a massively fun, unique type of fighting game, and that makes me adore it. 1. Mega Blooper's Bubble Battle. The players are underwater. Your guess is as good as mine as to how they aren't drowning. With Mega Blooper, tons of bubbles will appear, each with a half of a Mario series item. Well, a tile of one, I think. And you have to pick ones that'll match the half tiles right in front of you. Each time you do, you'll both get points and attack Mega Blooper. The player with the most points once he's down is the winner. But it's nowhere near that simple. Mega Blooper can ink as well as scramble the bubbles around, both of which make them harder to see. And that's especially a problem after he gets pissed off, since if you pick a wrong bubble, you'll lose points. This boss battle's pretty much perfect. It's incredibly fun, a good enough challenge, and takes really good focus. The concept may be a little far-fetched, but nitwits are for nitpicks. Oh wait, I screwed that up, didn't I? Eh, whatever. Mega Blooper's Bubble Battle is easily my number one favorite Mario Party 10 minigame. So there you have it, my ranking of every Mario Party 10 minigame. For more videos like this, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also, please check out my social media. All links are in the description. Adekupal, thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Mikoro out.